Okay, so as so many of you are asking about cacao and pregnancy, um, proper dosage, advice, um, experience, I thought I'm going to do this video while I am still pregnant. So, <laughs> I'm in, as you can see, probably in my last trimester, so I'm 39 weeks pregnant. And um, I've had quite a journey with cacao throughout my pregnancy and obviously before. So, first of all, I want to make the differentiation between someone that's completely new to cacao and someone that is experienced with cacao. So I've been drinking cacao for five and a half years already before, um, five years at least before the pregnancy. And um, sometimes daily, sometimes weekly, sometimes I was, um, yeah, I had more or less. Um, so over those five years, I already journeyed in very different phases with cacao. Um, and my body is very much used to it. I know also how my body responds. I can listen to my body. I know um, that when I have a sip, how much more I want to drink, if I want to finish my cup or not. And all these things are very important, right? So if you are, um, if you are experienced with cacao and you know how to listen to your body, great. Basically, you can end this video here and just do whatever you like. But listening to the body is easier said than done for many because um, it's like, yeah, but how do I listen to the body? How, how, how do I even know what my body wants? So it's, if you you might not be in you to cacao, you might actually be drinking cacao for a while, but on a very like strict way of like, I'm having, I don't know, 28 grams a day or 10 or whatever, um, and still haven't experimented with really feeling into how much your body wants, then I would go slow. Same for those that are new to cacao. So if your system is not yet used to cacao um, and also, yeah, you don't really know how your body reacts to it, just take it really slow. Um, especially at the beginning of pregnancy when it's really fresh. As um, we all know, cacao is an intentional medicine. So if you're maybe also moving through some unplanned pregnancy, um, you might just want to take it slow and only intentionally connect with cacao when you're having a question and you want to journey deep. Um, I didn't crave cacao in the first trimester. Um, the only thing I was longing for was the connection to the cacao spirit as well as the connection to my heart. So for that, of course, I did make myself a beautiful cup of cacao, but a small dose and not daily at all. So I Although I'm very much used to cacao, I needed a little break. And for me, it was because I was exhausted. My system didn't want any stimulation, just needed rest in the first trimester, particularly. Um, so the times I actually consciously chose to make space for cacao and drank my cacao was then to investigate and go inward and think about, okay, what would love do? What would my heart do? When I open my heart, what do I feel? What does this unplanned pregnancy bring up in me? Is this, you know, what are the fears? What are the doubts? Um, and also explore that together with my partner. So um, also having be really beautiful, conscious relationship conversations about our situation. Um, from the second trimester on then, I, I couldn't wait to drink cacao. <laughs> Um, it must have been, yeah, some like in the, it started again in the fourth month or fifth month where I really wanted to have cacao daily, sometimes even twice, and I couldn't wait to have cacao. And I had um, about 30 grams max, um, just because it was plenty, <laughs> it was more than enough, um, and also not, not daily, but I did have, I think I did have cacao daily, just not in that high, high dose, so sometimes it would have 15 grams, sometimes it would have 20 grams, sometimes it would have 30 grams. If I held ceremony, I actually would have a full dose, which I often didn't end up drinking completely because um, I noticed with that 42 grams, it was getting really strong. And also, um, my, my body wanted it, or baby wanted it sweet, which for me as a purist was a sign of taking it slow because when you sweeten your cacao, 
you're tricking your taste buds and you're tricking also your body sensation a little bit so um, I would then recommend just not having maybe the, the, the highest dose because theoretically your body tells you if you learn to listen to it that if you're having a pure plant how much you need from that pure plant so if you if it's too bitter for you um, then just have less um, instead of just you know sweeten it too much and then not not noticing when your body says stop of course sweeten it a little bit if you fancy I mean I <laughs> I did and enjoyed it but yeah in moderation and um, um, and yeah really second trimester was beautiful I really was was connecting with the cow really deeply again um, and um, it helped me come back into my kind of flow state helped me through lots of stress as well um, and um, in the third trimester then I noticed I started becoming really sensitive so even just a small sip of cacao made me it was really bitter first of all which was still lovely but <laughs> but it, I, it was enough to stimulate me for the whole day so then um, I decided to drink less and less um, and I have it um, every now and then, most days during the week, but not necessarily every day. Um, also, depending on how I feel, there's just some days where, of course, the prospect of some cacao is lovely, and the idea of like, oh, making myself a cup now and then sitting with it, and it's good. But I notice now I don't really need to intake it. So instead of intaking it, I actually sat down and gave myself that beautiful sacred connection or meditation and um, connect with the spirit of cacao um, instead of just instead of taking the plant itself um, but yeah m most of the days I have cacao about 15 grams and that's just the amount that seems to be more than enough for me um, I know about colleagues that drink 30 grams a day the whole pregnancy through so I'm saying this that to let you know there's no rule to it so you can totally Drink as much or as little cacao as you want. I would just advise you to make sure you have a proper source and I will put the, my discount link in the video descriptions where you can order Keys Cacao which is the cacao that has the least amount of caffeine because that's the one thing I would like to like you to be aware of. You can have caffeine in your pregnancy you know you can have a cup of coffee here and there and um, however if you do have caffeine you want to make sure you know exactly where your caffeine comes from because caffeine is in coffee, caffeine is in tea, black tea, green tea, white tea, um, caffeine is in cacao and um, then there's obviously other sources like guarana and all that so it's, especially if you then also drink energy drinks or whatnot just be aware that all this adds up and you don't want to have more than I think it's 200 something caffeine per day or something so you, you just don't want to have too much and there are cacao brands out there that are very high in caffeine and low in theobromine which is also a pity because theobromine is the um is the chemical you want the compound in cacao you want cacao uh, keys cacao particularly is tested so you know exactly how much is in there it's um it's below a cup of decaf coffee so it hardly has any caffeine in it um, so and you're fine to drink a decaf coffee as well of course that's one thing so be aware which brand you choose and if you have a brand that has higher caffeine amounts then just take it slow and yeah don't drink coffee additionally or you know or change it switch it um, and this the second is that cacao has been traditionally been given in birth as well to help women in labor so that's what I'm planning to do is to have a proper ceremonial dose during labor I might report after <laughs> um, however also as we know it's an adaptogenic plant it has been given together given together with a, another plant called rue RUE um, for releasing pregnancy right at the beginning because um, together with other plants and herbs, and there, often there are other plants as well involved that we just don't know of anymore. Um, 
but especially that combination of Kika and Rue is uh, set to enhance contractions, which towards the end of pregnancy and towards birth you you, you want. <laughs> you want the contractions, you, have, you want to push the baby out and you, you want to have the oxytocin, the serotonin and the dopamine and all these feel-good hormones that help with the oxytocin that flushes through your body because that's actually what brings on your contractions is the oxytocin and endorf the endorphins in your body help. So that's a beautiful mix. However, when you're at the beginning of pregnancy, you don't want the contractions unless you want to release the pregnancy, which is also a choice. And um, But then I'd tell you, like, find someone who, who really knows what they're talking about. I just know from the research that traditionally in South Central America, that is something that has been additionally given as a plant way of releasing. And you just want to be aware of that. Um, I'm not saying this will bring on any contractions for you. Like I said, it's that is just something that has been done. We don't know if it's a really, if there's no science behind it yet. There's no study behind it yet. Um, but I would say from working with cacao for so long, it is about the intention. So if you are so happy about your pregnancy and you drink cacao with that intention of just Oh my gosh, yeah, I want to explore what this does to me, how I, you know, transition into this new initiation and and connect with my baby and the soul behind it. I think a cow will be absolutely give you that. Um, but if you have a different intention, well, maybe you have a different outcome. Hence why, if you're not used to cacao, go slow in the first trimester, I would say at least in the first few weeks. And um, if you're totally used to cacao in any way, or, or you eat two bars of chocolate every day, you're safe. Like even that, just think about what is your chocolate like intake, because in a way that is also cacao. Or you know, do you drink hot chocolate? Do you bake chocolate cakes or use cacao powder a lot? Then um, of of course that's not the same as salmon and cacao. However. Um, still your body is used to it and it's a very subtle plant it's not like a big that it won't have won't throw you completely off track um, so this is just what I found out personally um, and apart from that again I would say trust your body with everything in pregnancy I know you want a dose you want a perfect rule you want a number how much can I have, basically? This is plant medicine, this is a sacred plant. So there will not be a rule because it's an adaptogenic. It will react individually with your body and yourself and your spirit and your soul. Hence why following a rule is not necessarily the best idea. Um, hence why I can't really give you those. Like I said, I know um, a colleague of mine who drank 33 grams almost every day throughout her whole pregnancy then I you know was in between 20 grams to then 30 to then 10 <laughs> to then you know drinking it daily to not drinking daily so completely different and um, I wish you to really sit with that yourself and if you feel like you can't decide for yourself the portion find a facilitator, find someone who's experienced, find someone who you can trust and work with them and ask them how much, you know, so, or ask them to guide you how to listen to your body and how you can find that space. And, um, and enjoy that as well. So give thanks, give gratitude to Cacao. She will be working with your body individually. And it's nothing to be nothing to be afraid of either. Cacao and pregnancy goes really well hand in hand. Um, there's no known contraindication. Actually, it enhances the breast milk. It helps with lactation. Um, it helps you to open the heart, to move through fears, to move through worries. It can help you to you know stimulate your body a little bit and your mind and concentrate, find um, rest and peace and ease. Um, help you also to have a lovely elixir that you are allowed to drink in a you know in a t in a period of time where you probably have to cut down on many other substances such as coffee or alcohol or whatever you you intake so 
having a cow as an ally and support during pregnancy is wonderful and I can only recommend it and hence why please um, find your own, own pace with it and trust your body as I said also not only is cacao individual also every pregnancy and every woman is individual right so you might have heard of pregnancy cravings you might have some yourself and um, I've been craving lemons for months that's 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 the only craving I had other people would crave um, pickles or chocolate or whatever and what I'm trying to illustrate here is that we are all different you will have specific different needs and can't stretch this enough but I always I I was always longing for a certain rule that I could follow and when people told me oh no it's individual to you and you have to go with the flow and find what's right for you I was a bit annoyed because like yeah but tell me just tell me <laughs> I don't know and you have to start learning to know especially in pregnancy and pregnancy will help you with this if you're a person like me that was not really good in trusting your body pregnancy is an amazing time to practice this you're so much more in tune you will taste things that you like you will taste things that you don't, don't like even if you don't rationally know what you what you're looking for today you know like you might go out <laughs> to having lunch with a friend like i did and just asking what do you fancy I have no idea what I'm fancy but as soon as I put something in my mouth I knew oh yeah that I like and this I don't like and you practice it you will you will get there and hence why there's no rule so make instead of asking others what do I what should I eat what can't I eat um, how much cacao can I drink um, how little should I or whatever instead of asking these questions ask yourself what can I do to gain trust in my body and find out myself what I need.